friends welcome back to uh, the second installment of uh, these uh, mini lessons mini lectures on musical rhythm musical time and groove uh, these uh, mini uh, lessons are part of uh, a sort of prelude to a book I'm working on on musical time and musical rhythm. Today we're going to talk about um, guiding posts and developing our perception of these guiding posts while we are performing music. I remember when I went to music school when I was a little kid uh, in Venezuela um, one of the things that we would do while we were learning how to read music was to tap with our hand or with our feet to count um, the pulses as we were trying to come up with uh, or, or trying to perform the rhythms that the teachers were giving us. That uh, idea of keeping your pulse uh, through uh, a musical performance, that was sort of the main way that uh, rhythm was taught at music schools uh, w that I have attended, all the way to uh, Juilliard and, and, and beyond. Today I wanted to share with you a couple of other things that I have picked up along the way uh, during my studies of Afro-Cuban music and Afro-Caribbean music. Um, in those styles of music, it's helpful to be aware of the pulse, the count, right? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, but it's also paramount to lock in to the main subdivision of the beat, what I call the grain of the groove, grain right, as a grain of rice, right, the smallest subdivision of musical time that acts as a reference uh, for the rhythmic patterns that we're trying to lock into. The grain is what, let's say, a shaker plays. For example, one, two, three, four, you hear? Chaka, 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 chaka. So that's a second guiding post besides the pulse. You can hear the pulse here on the accents. One, 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 one. That's the pulse. Pulse is one always, right? And then you hear chaka, 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 chaka. That is the grain of the groove. Afro-Cuban, Afro-Latin music always has a grain of either four subdivisions or three, two, one, two, one, two, and that, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. You see, you hear that? Okay. Another thing that is very important in Afro-Cuban music is what we call clave. And... Clave is a pattern that is repeated and it's usually played on an instrument called a claves or on a cowbell or, or other loud instrument. And this instrument acts as a kind of like a guiding way of subdividing the beat. It, a better way of understanding it is a specific way of accenting the grains of the groove that you hear. So for example, if the grain is chaka 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 and I play this chaka 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 those are accents that I'm playing on top of that. In Cuba, we have different kinds of claves. 
the most popular being probably this one, Son Clave. Cuban musicians are always aware of what kind of clave beat the particular style that you're playing is based upon or what kind of clave beat is used with that specific style of Cuban music that you're playing. This idea of a constant pattern that accompanies a kind of music and informs which way the grain of a groove is subdivided, that came to the Caribbean, specifically to Cuba, with Africans that were enslaved and brought over to this side of the world. You can find similar patterns to clave in West and Central Africa and with a, with a similar function as well. They are played on loud instruments that the entire musical ensemble can hear and everybody latches on to those patterns not unlike we latch on to the beat that a conductor is beating in an orchestra. So in a sense, these patterns that in Cuba are called clave, ethnomusicologists call these patterns timelines uh, because they are time musical time subdivisions or musical time accentuations that a whole ensemble follows. Um, and this is a third guiding post for Afro-Cuban and Afro-Latin music. Last but not least is to be aware of the cycle. What is the cycle? How many pulses it takes for a pattern to repeat itself? So, in Western classical music, where often rhythmic patterns are not repeated in a cyclic way, but are repeated across longer spans of time, like phrases or things like that, periods or whatever you call them, um, it, the rhythm is ever-changing. For example, that's a whole phrase, and it's not a cyclic pattern because it's just a whole phrase, but it, when, when, when the phrase ends, another phrase starts with a different rhythmic scheme. That's in classical Western music. Now, in Afro-Cuban music and many parts of uh, uh, the world, where there is a, 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 um, an ostinato or a constant beat that is repeated. That beat is going to represent the identity of that sound, of that style. And that beat is going to be repeated over and over and it's going to have a cycle of beats that it lasts for, a cycle duration. For example, Right, so we have a simple pattern. One, repeat, repeat. Okay, so this one has a, a grain, a pulse is here. One, two, three, four. The grain is three beats per pulse. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the pattern doesn't repeat until four pulses have gone by. One, two, three, Four, repeat, two, three, four, repeat, two, three, four, repeat. Okay, so let's recap. What have we learned? We have learned that it's great to be aware of what pulse, what's the main pulse of the music that we're playing. But aided with other traditions, such as Afro-Cuban music, we can come to the understanding that there are other guiding posts in musical rhythm that can help us embody whatever part we're playing, whatever rhythm we're trying to accomplish. And those guiding posts are the pulse, right? The subdivision of the beat, or what I call the grain of the groove. The timeline, or clave. What is that? 
a scheme of accents that repeats over and over and informs the style that we're playing. And last but not least is how many pulses does that pattern last? So I am aware of all of these things while I'm playing, let's say I'm playing congas or I'm playing um, timbales, right? I'm playing in the context of Afro-Cuban music. But these ideas can also, we can borrow some of those uh, mental frames and oral frames to help us in the development of a better embodiment and understanding of whatever kind of music we're playing, whether it's Western classical music or different kinds of traditional music. I'm very curious about technologies that we can develop within our learning system, within our bodies, to better comprehend and understand musical rhythm. I hope that this mini lecture was helpful to you. Try to enhance, broaden your parameters of musical perception. And when we're talking about rhythm, it's helpful to not only be aware of the pulse, but also be aware of how is that pulse being treated. I will see you on the next installment of this series. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Be safe and see you soon.